Welcome, everyone. This is May 3rd, and this is the Object Storage Working Group. So let's get started with the agenda. The, the first item is mine. I would like to check um, what's the status of the Object Storage Working Group uh, comparing to our exit criteria to figure out if uh, we are in a situation where we can start wrapping up and, and declare this effort done. And so I was looking, uh, uh, so the exit criteria, the first one was about uh, documenting status quo of object storage and classify its usage by feature uh, vertical integration patterns, since we know there is, there'll be a drift between features. I think this is done. Okay, I see people nodding, so. I would maybe, so one thing uh, that might be worth doing, and I'm not sure how to best go about this, but I, I agree that the basic, I think we all understand um, how it all kind of ties together well enough now. And I think the main points we have written down and um, uh, Jacob confirmed with uh, a team member as well uh, that it seemed to have helped. So that, that's, that's good feedback, so it's good to know. That's kind of the litmus test, right? <laughs> Writing documentation is like putting it in front of someone who has never worked with it and then getting feedback. Um, but like one thing I did notice is that um, uh, when we first started to uh, document the individual, like on a per feature level, how do they perform upgrades? Um, I, 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 because I, I, I drove that issue, I didn't understand well enough and I wasn't really in a position to review what uh, users were adding to this table that is now part of documentation. And I'm not sure it's correct. I think maybe maybe to wrap this up completely, we could um, go over this table together, maybe even now if there's enough time in this meeting today and do a quick check if that makes sense. What, uh, because we had just like distributed this kind of fan this out uh, throughout the org and then kind of relied on what everyone contributed was correct. and. I, I, would, I think I mentioned before, I think there are some combinations in there that can't really be true, like um, direct upload, but a sidekick upload is the uploader in the uploader column. And I don't think that's a combination that can ever happen. Uh, so let, let's maybe do that. So make sure that this is actually correct. Uh, but I think other than that, I, I agree. I think we have enough. Yeah, probably all of us now know more about this since we started, so we can just look through the list. So, okay, uh, let, let's go to the to the list of items, and then uh, during this meeting, we try to go through the list and see to the table and see if there's something that, that doesn't make sense. Good call out. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, <clears throat> point B: Outline a path forward by designing a new simplified architecture for object storage. Now here. We have a couple of suggestions as well as um, what uh, the scalability framework team is doing, which is um, taking from what we started describing and trying to build a plan. Uh, so yeah, maybe here is just a matter of um, wrapping up things, uh, linking all the proposals and things like that. And I will consider this done. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> as well as identify high level step uh, we need to take for the architecture to be realized. That's kind of in line with that thing because here I, here I just put the exit criteria but then there was another section in the page which said what we are not going to do. And there are things like we're not going to do a full implementation. We are not going to uh, micromanage the steps needed to give us a full, full solution. So I think that B and C are in line with what we have done as well as D because prototype individual aspect of it by exploring both new technologies such as active storage or reworking existing code. I think this is where David did a lot of work. We did a couple of tests on active storage and other single authorization endpoint. We learned a lot from this. So I would say yeah. this is- and, and also um, there was quite a bit of work done, like I think five MRs or so to um, uh, go through workhorse as well. and. Um, yeah, kind of go. It, it didn't add new features, but like it, it kind of cleaned up the uh, oh, cool. a bit there. So there was actually quite a bit of uh, work done. Uh, so that's, okay, that's so the maybe reworking existing code. Bit. So maybe if let, let's let's do something like this, which is it's easier. Uh, everyone who did some type of merge request related to this, please send it to me. 
So we try to just write, uh, build a collection of what we have done and try to categorize so that we can just write out what, what we did. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, identify features and configuration that should be deprecated to reduce the maintenance complexity. So we removed uh, the pseudonymizer buckets and feature. We uh, removed uh, background upload, and there is a point from last week that we didn't discuss about the direct upload toggle, which right now really makes little sense to still have. So that's maybe something we can. Uh, I, I think um, it's already on, on Jacob Rather, but let's try to figure out if this is another thing that it's part of what we can remove. So to me, here we are in a kind of a wrapping up situation. So we want to clean up to just, and, and so yeah, I, I'm really happy with the status. I, I, I would agree. I mean, like, um, I, I think we got, you know, like, is there more we could have done? Maybe, right? I mean, I guess that's always true. Yeah, but, sure. um, and I think we got, I think we, I, I'm really glad that we have something to show for each of these points. It's, we have like no area really uh, where we like left all stones unturned basically. So we really looked at everything. Um, so that's good. And um, yeah, I also agree we should start to wrap up uh, because with 15 zero coming up, uh, I think there's also less availability yeah. uh, in working uh, on, on these orthogonal kind of kind of aspects. Yeah, so uh, a lot going on in terms of deprecations and, and things. Like yeah, that. I'm also really manager, which is putting a big yeah, tax on my I, available time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yes, I think we need to wrap this up uh, and think about a communication message. Then we want to broadcast what we have done. And if we want to uh, outline, for instance, the new documentation, just uh, inviting engineers to familiarize with topics and things like that. <clears throat> and I think that this ties well in point number two, Matthias, because- uh, Yeah, we, we had um, briefly touched on this uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I think. Okay, I don't know if at this point it even like makes sense anymore, but uh, I was thinking my experience was that the uh, Americas, I think it is the the one that for me at least in the evening used to have more attending the attendance the slot. So at some point the idea was floated, should we just always use that slot? Uh, actually, we have four people today, so, so that's 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 actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> like I think I, all of us could attend the more or less the the American meeting. Because we, we we did the EMEA one, especially for people which are which lives easier than us. We in the original um, memberships we had a lot of people from um, either uh, Australia or, or so that area or uh, Russia. So it was kind of shifted. Mm. This was shifted later in their day, and the the other one was overnight. But looking at attendance, but yeah, I'm again. It doesn't really make much sense if we are going to wrap things up and, and approach the the end of this working group. Yeah, no, that that that's a good point. So, that, uh, so yeah, uh, should should we go through that list now? The the, the yeah, yeah, let's do it. I, I think it, it it'll take five minutes on, and I think I think actually we briefly looked at it already. I think most of it is. Is correct, but maybe we can find a few. Do you have it already open? I uh, don't, just... but I can. I can definitely find it. Hang on. Uh, uh, should I uh, share my screen? Yeah, no, let's do it. Yes. Okay, you should should see my browser now. So we had added this to, uh, so, so this is the general uh, guideline for um, if you are a developer uh, and you just want to add a new thing that you can upload, kind of what are the steps you need to go through. Uh, last week, we also said, maybe we also want to review, uh, you know, this for completeness and kind of up-to-dateness because uh, uh, I think Jacob also said, it's actually not super clear. Like, how do we actually implement an uploader? We don't really have a good guide for this, but but that's maybe separate. So that's actually something maybe we can also consider um, documenting. It, it's just like, it seems like we haven't found anyone so far who would actually write this documentation because 
apparently no one on this working group has ever written an uploader, but uh, okay, that, that's maybe a, a separate point. So, um, so we have these tables, there's two. Um, one is about uh, this mapping from what is kind of the thing that you upload uh, in, into which bucket does it go and how does it get there? And then we have the, the carrier wave integration, which is like, um, uh, yeah, is, is this uh, like, like where is this uh, hook uh, defined? I mean, maybe that's just more uh, for yeah, uh, developers to look at rather than guiding like future development. But yeah, so let's go through this. Um, so we have job artifacts, uh, upload technology. Yeah, maybe we should also, maybe another thing I can look at this as well. If, uh, if we need to align this a bit with, um, I think we use slightly different terminology now in the uploads. Yeah, um, yeah, this was a point. Yeah, uh, probably we should align this with what we defined in, in, in the previous one. I think we just called it, I forgot, I think we just called it upload strategy or something. That wasn't necessarily intentional, but um, I, I don't know, I'll find out. But um, we have some kind of uh, definition for that. So this looks fine though. Um, I would expect, I mean, this is really the only combination that can be yeah, this is yeah, a valid right. combination. Okay. One of the few yes. that is valid. Yeah, I mean, I would say that if it's direct upload, there can it this can't only be workhorse here, right? There's no such thing as a. Yeah, probably uh, is what we say workhorse assisted or whatever. But yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, so this is good. Yeah. Uh, then next one. So so this is already where I struggle a bit because upload technology carry away. I think what we're more interested in is like, does this go through a rails? So if it's not direct upload, then we need to think about what are the other alternatives, right? Otherwise we have this. Um, yeah, here carry wave as a, means that we are relying on carry wave callbacks mm. to upload right. this from Sidekick because this is something that is generated uh, from an asynchronous job on Sidekick. Okay, so this is actually, um, Maybe this is computer have... generated stuff. System generates something in Sidekick, I hope. So this uh, is not a background upload? No. OK, so we actually have a manually defined Sidekick worker specifically for pipeline artifacts yep. that performs. OK, then this is correct. All right. Um, yeah, that's also an interesting one. Uh, live job traces. Does this, this is mean... a unique thing. OK. Because the, so this completely has its own separate. Uh, yeah, path. this is right. uh, yeah. its own implementation and it's uh, really complex. So because you okay. receive chunks of data and they are stored in Redis, if I remember correctly, and then when we have enough, they are uploaded, or something like this. This changed mm -hmm. over time, but this is uh, completely implemented from scratch. Is using none of the other technologies. Okay, got it. Um, at this point, I'm also thinking, would it, I don't know if it gets a little too crowded in here, but would it make sense to actually have a link to the worker? I had a hard time when I first looked at this, finding out like where mm -hmm. these workers actually live. Uh, that could be something that might yeah, be Yeah, yeah. For, for those that have sidekick next to them, probably a link to the worker as an entry yeah. point to understand. That's a good call out. I guess I could, maybe you can guess, like it would be something like, you know, artifact uploader. Yeah, but upload I mean, no, like that. That, that one is really hard to find, especially then if you want to compare with the next one, which is the job trace archives, right? Because they are basically doing the same thing. So the first one, live job traces is handling chunks mm -hmm. of log. And uh, the next right. one, mm -hmm. if, I, if I remember correctly, is the one that collects those chunks and, and create a single uh, stable lo final log file for right. it. Makes sense. Yeah, okay, got it. All right, so this seems to be another funky one, auto scale runner caching. So this Yeah, but yeah, this is this, is, this is nothing to do with what we're doing. It's it's part okay. of the product, but it's handled by the runner itself right, right. to my understanding. That's why I was here to say, okay, it's not some I say uploading technology not available. So it's not something mm -hmm. that was in line with this working group effort. Fair enough. So I guess same for the backups then. Yeah, exactly. Then we have, uh, yeah, get LFS files. So they're coming through workhorse via mm -hmm. upload. Yeah, I, re I remember actually looking at this. That's that's fine. Um, okay, so then design management file. So this means, okay, so it goes to the Rails controller, but it's um, workhorse assisted, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually, like, yeah, should, is that something we should do? Should we rename this now to workhorse assisted or? 
think that's what we call them. How did we mention, how did we explain this? Because the they are all yeah. workers assisted, but yeah, this yeah, right, one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe at this point, people- No, but that's it. important to, there's an important distinction here that maybe was not important at the higher level when we're just explaining how things work, but here there's an important things, which is, <clears throat> I mean, you're right. It's not really that important. <laughs> yeah, you're just, I mean, as long as you know that Rails controller is uploading it, means that it is not direct uploaded by workers. Yeah, that's the point. So you can be workers assisted. Yeah, it makes. It's the same problem when we don't we have those things that are orthogonal and things that are kind of mm. specific to. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think this was like the hardest thing about this whole topic was that we we tried a lot to kind of work this multi-dimensional problem into these two-dimensional tables, <laughs> and that doesn't always work very well because you have to yeah flatten it somehow. The bucket structure value, I think it's a bit off. This one here? Yeah, because it's design management files. So why oh, do that's, we have... Oh, uh, that looks like copy and paste simply. Yeah. Oh, that's the... <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, wait, is this... Ah, oh, there's two design management... Oh, yeah, yeah. that's definitely a, a bug. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, because it I don't know what happened yeah one of the, for the thumbnails and the other one is for the, the, the user uploaded. Do, do you know, uh, David, what the correct... Uh, no, I would assume that both the files and the thumbnails goes to upload design management and whatever mm. structure they have below. But, yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, the, the design management files into the LS, LSF, LFS object bucket sounds not correct. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely wrong. Yeah, that's definitely wrong. Okay. Well, um, we can maybe, uh, we can just Ask, should we just ask the team that does that, owns that, if they know what the structure is? I'm not sure. I don't I have access Let to these buckets. Let me see so if I'm... I have it on my GDK, just as a, because maybe I was testing it and could, should be there. So we can just take it out immediately. So it's mini IO data. So we say it should be uploads design management, right? Uploads. I mean, we, yeah, we can also we can also do it async. We can just make a note that yeah, yeah, sure. needs fixing, and then like whoever has any insight, could just um, start an MR, and we can go from there. All right, but I assume this is correct then. Um, so the thumbnails they go through Sidekick, I guess, because there's some post processing. Yeah, to be we done. schedule a job right. that is resizing and uploading from Sidekick using okay, Carry Wave. All right, cool. No, then that's correct as well. Uh, this looks right. Uh, yeah, that's the general uploads. Um, personal snippets. Uh, this has a separate entry because it has actually a different bucket structure. Okay. Yeah. That looks fine. Um, appearance settings, right. Jesus, uh, okay. those are terrible. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. I guess that's correct outside of the, yeah, yeah. maybe we need to see if that remains to be just buffering. But, uh, avatar images. Um, is that actually true? Does that use direct upload? I was thinking avatar images. Wow. Um, Maybe user avatar. Yeah, yeah. It's pro probably user avatars are. Yeah, I, I'm. Well, I don't know the the, the actual code. Uh, that uploads this or process this, but uh, I recall seeing some spec examples for the multi-part middleware that processed the direct upload object from workhorse. Mm -hmm. And there were some examples for uh, the avatars because they, oh, are, okay. they, are, they are nested. It's, yeah. a, it's a file that is nested in a, in a field that is in a form. And so we had to support this uh, nested field that is an upload that is direct uploaded by workhorse. Oh, right. Yeah, that's the spec example. So yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm okay. assuming that if we have a spec example, is it's because yeah, it's direct upload. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So this next one though, I remember we talked about import export before, and then we said it was done through Sidekick. So that's. 
I, I think the problem here is that we call it import export, but they have very different usage pattern. Oh, so, so it's when you import when you, versus yeah. export is different. Yeah. When you import is direct uploaded by mm. workers. When you export is a sidekick generated and upload, I think uploaded with Caterway. So is that an action item that we should split this then? Yeah, I would say that probably it is. All right. Um, GitLab migration. I don't know what this is. That's also import related. Or is that maybe, or maybe that is? I think it's when you import from uh, live from GitHub or other data sources. Ah, OK. But that's not the split you just mentioned. No, no. I, yeah, I, I was saying. The import exporting when you as a user just have a, a GitLab like a generated or... export or yeah, yeah, yeah. and you want to import. So you, I so see. Yeah, yeah. Great. That one is a live migration from another service provider. OK, so basically what's missing is the, is the, is the role for export, right? So this should be yeah, import this... and then. Yep. OK, got it. Then MR diffs. Um... Sounds like there's also. That's yeah, like the really next one is tricky, because, but we have David. Yeah, because um, I was just not able to find all of these custom hand rolled sidekick workers that do all of these uploads. I don't know why. Maybe I looked in the wrong place, but so I'm really surprised. That's why I thought it's wrong in the table. I thought like all of these would rely on background upload, but yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Does anyone know anything about it? David should know about this. No. You are no. muted. Okay. No, on on MR divs. Uh, no, no, the package I... manager archives. Ah, uh, okay, I saw so, it. Because you see direct uploaded oh, oh, and sidekick. Oh yeah, that that's that looks odd. Yeah. Yeah. So on packages, it's uh, direct upload and workers, except for one format. But I guess we can just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Which is npm. Uh, npm, NPM. is a. Uh, it's a standard upload by Rails because it's, well, it's an upload in a JSON body and it's uh, not currently supported by workhorse. So I that's see. why. Okay. Uh, yeah. But for all the other uh, formats is direct upload workhorse. Yeah, yeah, I think right. what because we did here is that we uh, exploded this table based on the bucket structure. As you can yeah. see, we have the same yeah. feature yeah. name but then the, the, the bucket structure is based on Debian compared to, uh, no, so there are multiple files into a single package. So maybe here, and, and as well as you have some sidekick operations, uh, what you're doing, you're moving with sidekick? What, what are you doing in sidekick? Yeah, we, we are moving files in object storage because we need to move the, the actual um, business object. And since the key as you can see, the, the structure okay. is linked to the package ID. Mm -hmm. We are moving from one package to another package, the file. And so we need to move the file in object storage. So th this sounds more like tech depth. That's something really worth capturing here. I don't know what, what you what you will think. Yeah. We'll just break out a new row, uh, which somehow we can just say packet, like NPM package manage, manager archives or something. Um, we could, uh, although it's like out of the nine formats, it's only NPM that is not supported. So it's more mm -hmm. of an exemption than anything okay. else. If you mm -hmm. want to be complete, we can add it. Otherwise we can also, All right. uh, so, I, mean, I, I, I guess, just ignore it because it's just one exception. And so what, what about this? I think that this table for the package manager archives as it is, is confusing. So mm -hmm. I would say maybe this is something that could, you could fix, David, because you have yeah. more more, more uh, knowledge and think about how can we rewrite those three lines in something that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. So the next one that looks that makes sense at least. Uh, on yeah, me. it's on me. Uh, well, on my team, <laughs> not me directly. <laughs> yeah. Interior um, image cache. We also have uh, a question mark. <laughs> Yeah, it's the dependency proxy cache, uh, which caches blobs and manifests from container images. So yeah, I will fix that role too, I Thank guess, with okay. the, the other ones. I mean, how, how about like, um, 
maybe you can like open an MR with these changes. And if we have other things to contribute, you can just all assign us as reviewers as well. We can all contribute uh, fixes where we think something can change yep. and we can have a single MR that um, yeah, makes updates sense. this thing. Yeah, that works. Uh, all right, Terraform state files that I think was the most recent one. I think we had it, right? No, this is the this is not the recent one. This was already uh, there, but it's okay. the first one that implemented uh, encryption. Mm, right, okay. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, that's I think that's correct. We just counted archives. Yeah, um, that's another one. I have no idea. So this is, oh no, this is easy. I can tell you what is happening here. So this is for uh, when we migrated the pages from NFS to object storage. So basically uh, before we had a sidekick job that was um, unpacking the artifacts supposed to be deployed by GitLab pages into an NFS share that was shared with the G GitLab pages fleet. Now those things are kept as a zip archive into object storage and pages is reading the content of the website directly from object storage inside the zip file because we have a way of getting things inside. So this just telling you that after you complete a pipeline, if there is a job that is marked as pages deployment, then a sidekick job starts that is moving this artifact into the final destination. So it's sidekick and this carry wave. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. And then secure files. This I think is the last one that we had during the, uh, okay. the, the okay. working group. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and it's so sidekick. Oh, wasn't aware of this. Looks like. Um, all right, so to, to recap, and um, yeah, so we can just collaborate on, on, on an MR. Um, so that was mostly, uh, so fixing these three, breaking out an export row. Um, yeah, maybe we can rename this to, I think, upload strategy. I think strategy is the word we use just to be consistent with the terminology. Um, and um, I think the rest was actually correct. And what I would maybe propose is um, whenever it says sidekick, uh, to the extent we know where it is and I can find it, let's turn this into a link that points to the worker. I think that would be very useful so that it's actually clear like where that work is happening. Is that something you mm. think is feasible? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's something that will age, not yeah, age well. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, LinkedIn Point code from code. the documentation is always tricky because okay, okay. you need to keep it up to date. Right, um, right. And, and it may break other, because I think we check uh, symlink, uh, not symlink, we check, we check links from the, um, when we when we lint the web page, but I'm not sure if we check only that's not internal a problem links. because that's, it will just point to a blob. The blob will always exist. It's just like on the latest master, it might not exist anymore, yeah, if, be called yeah. differently or, yeah. Okay, no, that's a fair point. I mean, I guess we don't have to do it. Um, can I ask a question for, sure. uh, since we have a workhorse maintainer, so it will be more efficient. <laughs> uh, on the, on the sections about implementing a new route, uh, mm -hmm. that's a section uh, we wrote once we understood how uploads worked. <laughs> Um, if you, can you scroll down? It's, oh yeah, but this is also, <laughs> there's no workhorse tracker anymore. Yeah, there, there are some things I think they are uh, not So creating a new release. And... Yeah, exactly. They are not valid anymore because the workhorse code base is within GitLab. Uh, the, yeah, this the is on, uh, GitLab uh, now, Jacob is so... working on this. He has oh, an issue okay. about updating the steps. He's just trying to collect an uh, up-to-date steps and then he wants to... Yeah, okay. Yeah, because we we discussed about uh, asking a new release on workhorse and bumping the version file, but I don't think you need to do that. Now. No, 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 nothing of this is needed anymore. Yeah. Okay, right. Question, um, if... I mean, if we are if we are done with that part of the of the document, uh, if not, I, I can help. I can uh, wait uh, uh, a little bit. So I, I think we have the next list on the document, and then we are good to move on. 
the next table, which is, uh, which is the carrier wave integration, it kind of give us where we don't know something because there are some of those uh, carrier wave uh, mounted stuff that have no yes mark in the categorized table. Let me just share it. Oh, okay. Here we go. This table here, carrier wave integration. So when we had yes means that this thing is somewhere in the table above. But then when we were, because this we we made we found this with wrapping through the source code. But then no one ever told us about those three mm. things, mm. as well as this here, as well as this. So is that the team like who who owns it or? Oh, this is uh, this is in the table now because it's a secure file. Mm. So yeah, I mean. If you remember in the beginning, we were just trying to figure out, please, if you know something that you are uploading, tell right. us how it works. And probably no one knows about those things or okay. you never read that message. And yeah, yeah I mean, that's a surprising actually, like vulnerabilities. That's um, AppSec, I guess, right? No, I think it's it's should, it should definitely be owned. <laughs> it's the security team, actually. They, um... I think they own those kind of uh, features. Mm. So, so basically, like, mm, go ahead. Yeah, like everything, like, uh, like dashboards, uh, security dashboards, um, and so on. Like when you go on security and compliance uh, menu uh, on the left, um, you actually like have a bunch of security related stuff uh, and uh, all those features there. They are, if I'm not mistaken, normally owned by uh, the security. Okay. Right. So, so for I those this... rows, we're, we're, we're missing them in the other table, basically, right? Is that yeah. Because... Yeah, okay. Hmm. And, oh, uh, sorry, give um, me one sec. Someone is ringing yeah. at the doorbell. I'm just checking, but um, normally the security team actually... Uh, um, I'm sorry, but I have to go I have another meeting. Yeah, we're <laughs> we running on, we're already over. Time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I will open we, the email with the, the fix. Yeah, and we can just then go from there, do it async. Yeah. All, right. Okay. All right, see ya. Yeah, so the secure, the secure team actually uh, owns like static analysis, dynamic uh, vulnerability. Um, so, so, yeah. It should normally be owned by them. Yeah, I mean, right now we did, we already did all the effort in trying to figure out categories. So it should be quite easy to get those two values. So uh, how is it uploaded? That, that's basically the question. So maybe we can try to, to squeeze this in, in this MR that, we, that David is going to open and try to also tick those new elements. So we say, okay, we nothing was left uh, uncategorized. But yeah, I mean, we, 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 can, can, we can handle this when we do the DMR. The I think it's just a few of them and just a matter of pinging some uh, EM on those, uh, on, on those feature category and getting the information out. Sounds good. All right. 